Thank you very much, Kate. And uh, yeah, so I wanted to tell you uh, a little bit of a story about my career. Uh, so currently I sell uh, sleep machines. And uh, it didn't start out that way. Actually, a few years ago, back in 2012, um, I was actually working as a registered nurse. And um, actually, the, the, the big part of the story is about why I'm applying to business school. And there's sort of three parts to it. The first part is sort of the turning point in my career when I decided to apply. Uh, the second part was when I applied to three schools. And the third part is the final school that I applied to. So a couple years ago, back in 2012, I was working as a registered nurse at Sunnybrook Hospital. So as you can imagine, uh, hospitals are very busy places. I was, uh, half of my shifts were day shifts and half of them were night shifts. Has anyone else here worked uh, night shifts before? So you, you guys understand. It is tough working 7.30 at night until 7.30 in the morning, right? So it, it affects your relationship with friends, families, not to mention my beauty sleep, right? And I was like, I don't know how people do this, right? Uh, I was missing events, I was, and the first time, I still remember the first time missing a friend's wedding because I couldn't get that shift off. It was heartbreaking, like, I can't, I can't come because you can't just switch shifts whenever you want to. You have to find another co-worker to work my shift, and then I have to work that person's shift, and my manager had to approve it, right? So, needless to say, I couldn't find someone to work my shift, right? And I still remember during long weekends, right? So, long weekends typically on Monday. But I would never have a long weekend because I'd either be working the Saturday, Sunday, or Monday, either part of the day, so I never really had three days off to spend with, with friends or family. And can you imagine around uh, Christmas, uh, you'd actually have to choose between working Christmas or New Year's. Half the staff would have to work one holiday, and the other staff would have to work the other holiday. So for several years, I missed Christmas with my own family, right? or New Year's Eve with friends. And so that's when I really started to think about uh, like, is this the lifestyle that I want? And I was actually thinking of moving towards a more of a nine to five kind of a, a job. And so I just I look on the computer and started to look at job postings. And I was like, I only had uh, an undergrad. So I was like, well, the, some of these jobs that I want, they require a master's. And I was like, well, I don't have a master's yet. Uh, so, and what else do I need? Like, I was thinking about my passions and I've always had a passion for business. So I was like, well, I've got interest in healthcare, interest in business. An MBA is the perfect fit for me. So that's when I started to look around at schools. So which leads me to the second part of the story is, is uh, sort of the application process, right? So here in Toronto, we're very lucky to have seven business schools. So I went to all of the info sessions, and then all of the, uh, the admission coordinators in person. I, I listened to the differences between the programs, and I saw which one would be a good fit for me. And in my own circle of friends, I actually had about 15 people that had completed their MBAs. So I met up with, for coffee for every single one of them, Ask them, you know, why did they choose the schools they chose? What factors uh, made them choose that school over other schools? And I, I started to compile all the requirements. So by late 2013, I completed all the requirements for uh, a few applications, and I chose three schools to apply to. So I applied to uh, Ryerson, uh, McMaster, and York. And I waited. And, um, you know, I, I quickly realized that it's quite competitive to get into business school. I was like, I, had, I didn't really realize until you actually uh, look at some of the numbers. So at uh, York, one of the most, uh, arguably one of the most competitive schools, how many applicants do you think there are? Any guesses? 60,000. Not that high. <laughs> uh, any other guesses? A number of applicants that apply per year? Seven times as many as there are positions. So not that much. So it's about 1,200 applicants. So 1,200 applicants, and there's only how many spots? Guess. A bit more, so about 400 spots, right? So 1,200 applicants, 400 spots. I can just picture them in the office. They're probably just like stamping, reject, 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 and then maybe they'll you know, give and accept, right? So I was thinking, this is you know, crazy, right? Like, this, how can there be so many qualified applicants here in Toronto trying to go to these business schools, right? So within six months, I, you know, I slowly got all the th three letters in the mail. I opened them. I got rejected from Ryerson. I actually went to Ryerson for my undergrad. I was like, I went to Ryerson and they rejected me for grad school there. What? It's shocking, right? Uh, McMaster, also rejected. And then from York, also rejected. So you can imagine those kind of feelings of like, of like kind of failure, right? Like, how do I face my friends and family? Like, this is something that I've been wanting to do. I'm trying to make a change in my career and I can't get to that next step, right? So should I apply again? Some people said, well, we'll try applying again, but I'm thinking if I apply next year, I'm going to have the same, I still have the same sort of job, my undergrad marks have been the same, my GMAT score is the same, nothing would have changed. So I had to look sort of wider, right? And I, I, I was thinking, 
if I do apply to one more school, there would have to be a school that sort of fit uh, what I was looking for and, um, and not those same three schools. So I actually found a school out in Vancouver. It's called Vancouver Island University. And I applied to that one last school. And I figured if I don't get into there, into that school, then that's going to be the end of my, uh, my MBA uh, career. And I will just look at other options, right? And so just to think about also other people in, in sort of the business world that, um, that have also been successful and they actually sell them, they also uh, sort of failed in sort of uh, their undergrad career. So for example, Bill Gates, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, Oprah, all three of them, actually they started their, their undergrads and they, they failed, yet they've still made huge contributions to society. So I, I may not be Mark Zuckerberg or you know Bill Gates or Oprah, but I still intend to make the impact in the healthcare system, right? That's, that's why I'm on sort of this passion and journey. And, uh, and I figured if those famous people uh, were able to talk about their sort of failures, I wanted this to be part of my story. So this is actually my first time sort of publicly talking about my journey uh, applying to uh, these three business schools and not getting in. And actually just two weeks ago, I did get a response from, from VIU. I opened up that letter because I was thinking, is it going to be a rejection or an acceptance? I opened it and I got accepted. Yes. So, uh, thank you. So I'll actually be picking up my life here and moving to, uh, so it's actually in Nanaimo, which is on Vancouver Island, and uh, in, in early June. And, and uh, I'll be there full time for about 19 months. And uh, I actually had a whole team of people I, uh, that have helped me in this journey. And I actually tried to invite them all to come here tonight, but uh, like the six of them, but I'll still mention their names. Um, so I actually had two GMAT tutors, uh, Bernice Chung, Bobby Umar. I also had... Um, to my uh, mentors uh, and references, uh, Jane Mosley, she works at uh, Women's College Hospital, and Ben Hum, he works uh, at the North American Association of Asian Professionals, and I also had a career coach that helped uh, with my applications, uh, so there's Diana Chan and Nicole Miles, you can Google all of them, they are very well known in the city, and this is sort of my way of publicly thanking them, um, and I'm actually going to video record this and uh, upload it to uh, YouTube later. And hopefully this has inspired you to think about your work-life balance, right? What's it going to take um, in your work life before you decide to make a change in your career? Thank you.